Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts as we're assembled for worship this morning, may they be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. I'm going to save the text and read it a little bit later in the message, and I think that you'll find out why at that time. I was eight years old when my grandfather died. He was a wonderful man, the patriarch of the family. Grandma had come to live with us because she didn't drive and it was much easier for us to be able to transport her back and forth to the hospital while Grandpa was still living. One day during the week, it was early afternoon, I heard the garage door open and I knew that something was up. Dad never came home early in the afternoon. They came up the steps from the basement and opened the door. I could see the tears in Grandma's eyes and my father's eyes. And he simply said to all of us, Grandpa has died. Several days later, Mom came into the room, woke my brother and I up. And she said, get up. Get dressed in your Sunday best. Now, we knew that something was going on because it wasn't Sunday. But we got up, got dressed, and went downstairs for breakfast. After breakfast, we got in the car and we drove that 25 miles to Cameron, West Virginia, over very twisting roads. Went to the center of town where the United Methodist Church was, Methodist Episcopal Church then. And we pulled into the parking lot and went into the social hall. We did this because in Grandpa's will, he asked that the immediate family gather together for the reading of his will. So the children of Grandpa and Grandma and the grandchildren all gathered in that space. We spent a reasonable amount of time talking with one another, sharing stories, sharing tears of sadness and tears of of joy. And then the judge in that small town asked us to be seated for the reading of the will, the last will and testament of Alan Breckenridge Kinsey. We sat down and the first part of the will that was read was just normal stuff. Grandma and Grandpa had accumulated certain things in their time, the house, the farm, all of their appliances, etc. And everything would be passed along to grandma. That was expected, save for the model A Ford that grandpa had. It was his first car and it was the only car that he ever owned. Because grandma didn't have a license, he thought, let's put it up for sale and maybe from the money generated, grandma could get some new clothes. The second part of the will was the part that was incredibly important, for it was our inheritance from Grandpa. Grandpa had taken the time before he died to write a paragraph or two about every member of the immediate family. He shared an experience that he had with that individual and spoke very clearly of the meaning of that experience for his life and hopefully for the life of that person. It was a wonderful and meaningful and a very emotional time. I told my story at 8 o'clock, and so I'll talk a little bit about my twin brother's story and what Grandpa had to say about Tim. Grandpa had that model A Ford, and he would take it in and around town and up the hills, and that thing would putter, and it would sput, and it was just something to behold. And we just loved to go for rides in that model A Ford. Well, we went out one morning. It was raining. And in those days, windshield wipers worked off of a vacuum. So if you're going up the hill and the engine is running at some speed, your windshield wipers would work. But if you happen to be going downhill, they're not going to work at all. Now this Model A that Grandpa had had a windshield that would kind of push out. And it was my brother who had the duty to stick his arm back up out of that window and just keep wiping the windshield for old grandpa. 
And my grandfather just loved that, and so did my brother. And he expressed that beautifully as he told the story. Wills can be very emotional. They can also be very hurtful. They can also leave people out. It happened in Scripture in the Old Testament. Women were considered property. They were never on the receiving end of any form of inheritance. In fact, Scripture suggests that even if a man and a woman had daughters, only daughters, there's a good chance that the inheritance would not pass to the wife or the daughters, but in fact go to the brothers of the man who died who may have sons in the family. Wills can be very difficult documents at time to work through. Wills can also have some problems in that a will could be written, but there's no one to read the will to. That was the case of John Grant. John Grant was an auto mechanic in Chicago. He lived in a van behind the garage where he had worked all of his life. And even in retirement, he continued to live in that van. Well, the police found John dead in the van one day. And then looking through the van, looking through some documents, they found a will. And in the envelope, there was a key. The will stated that his granddaughter was to receive everything, all of his possessions. But John never knew the granddaughter, had never seen the granddaughter what happened was this, John was married and they had a son, but shortly after that son was born, the wife left John, they ultimately were divorced, but the son never made contact with his father. Out of the union of the son and his wife, a daughter was born, John's granddaughter, and somehow he knew that a granddaughter had been born in the family even though he had never seen or ever heard from her, he did list her in the will as receiving the inheritance. It took several years for authorities to find this woman, but they gave her a copy of the will and gave her a key and gave her the address of the bank where the safety deposit box was held. She traveled one week to that area in Chicago and went to the bank and they pulled the safety deposit box out of the safe, put it on a table, and she opened it up with some caution. When she opened it up, she saw $5 bills, $10 bills, $20 bills, all lined up very neatly, the full depth of that safety deposit box. Apparently, John had just stashed away some change, some pocket money all of his life. She was surprised when she added it up to be nearly a half million dollars. Wills also have a tendency to surprise us from time to time. Wills can also be outrageous. Leona Helmsley, the heiress and real estate tycoon in New York, when she passed away, left billions of dollars in her estate. $12 million she left to her dog. The dog's name was Trouble. I wonder if there's any correlation between the two. Danny told me this morning that he'd be glad to take care of that dog. <laughs> Wills can also be problematic in that families, and I've heard some of the stories even here this morning, that families try to manipulate things to gain a greater inheritance. Scripture suggests that it happens as well. There's the story of Isaac and Rebekah. They had twin boys, Esau and Jacob. Esau was the eldest. He was the one that would gain the inheritance. One day, as a young man, Esau was out in the field. It was a hot day. He had worked all day. Came back to the house. Jacob was preparing some stew. And Esau says to Jacob, how about share 